Hey, this is Paul Miller with the Flop and Flow Show, the show about skill toys. Today, we're going to do a quick reflection of last week's skill toy challenge, which was the boomerang using the chattering. And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, other chatterings from around the world and finally issue this week's challenge. So grab your chattering or other skill toy and get ready to play. Okay, well, uh, I don't have an opening sequence, so... Here we go. Um, so last week I issued a challenge to myself to do the boomerang. That's the trick where you roll the chattering up the arm and back down and keep it going. And uh, if you want to see the progress, I did upload a video to YouTube where you can kind of check out the individual day-to-day -day practice sessions. Right out of the gate, this is what it looks like. See if I can accomplish it on, uh, on my first try. All right, that was pretty good, but that wasn't success. I will give myself three tries. Whoa, okay, look at that, two tries, I got it. That was the boomerang. I'll tell you, before I started practicing last week, I maybe did it five times in my whole life, but I managed to get it probably about 10 times throughout the week, and finally, now I can get it sometimes in pretty good form right out of the gate on my first try, and that feels real good. And it didn't come with a lot of work. I just spent five minutes a day or so practicing that trick. Now I did spend some extra time each day or on some days playing with other tricks and that's going to lead to uh, the challenge for this upcoming week. But before I get to that I want to show you some other chatterings from around the world, things from my private collection because I do love these skill toys and I love seeing different versions. Um, now my understanding is that the oldest version of this toy, the chattering, is actually a version that instead of having these beads uh, around a metal ring they were actually bells, they were like bell heads. I don't know if it was one or multiple, but I imagine it must have been beautiful just to hear the, the bells that, you know, sort of ch chattering as they went around the ring. Um, if anybody has any information about one of those, I would love to see it or know more about it. Please do reach out and share with me if you have any information. Um, the uh, story of this chattering, as far as we understand, is that uh, in New Zealand they had some toys, a family had uh, a chattering, and it was kind of like the one that I originally played with, that it was covered with plastic. And the story goes that uh, the boy's family, they had it in his house, and the, the house burned down and all the plastic melted off the chattering. Well, when the family went back to retrieve anything that they could salvage from the house, the boy found the chattering and tried using it without the plastic. And it turns out that it actually played a little bit better without the plastic, which is great. I mean, imagine that. Like, the modern chattering as we know it, this metal beads on this ring, might not exist if it weren't for this unfortunate event of a house fire. Well, this boy and his friends were started playing with it, and one of the friends' father had seen it, and story goes that he started manufacturing some. And then in the 90s, these became really popular in Japan, and New Zealand, and Australia, and again, yeah, here in the United States. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of the history of the modern-day chattering. Now, my first um, introduction to it actually wasn't as a ring. I, I saw something that was, had the same principle, this principle of precession. Right? You know when a, a top is spinning and it starts to slow down, it starts to, starts to wobble? That's precession. And, um, and these beads, uh, what they're doing is they're precessing along this ring as you turn it. And um, my first exposure to this principle was in a great performances video uh, of a gentleman by the name of uh, Michael Motion. Michael Motion, actually, really interesting guy. He's kind of the forefather of contact juggling. Um, that's where you take crystal balls or acrylic balls and you roll them on your hand. Um, in fact, uh, there was a movie, um, Labyrinth, and in that movie, uh, there was, um, what's that guy's name? David Bowie. David Bowie was, I don't know, a wizard? I haven't seen that movie in forever. But he, in the movie, he's actually manipulating this crystal ball on his hand, and it looks magical. And it was actually Michael Motion acting as a stunt double, kind of under the table and moving his arm. Uh, and, and so if you remember that movie and that scene, which you would probably stands out if you do and did, um, that was Michael Motion. He's also famous for developing this big triangle box that he uh, bounces bounce ball juggling, or he does bounce juggling inside and creates these incredible rhythms. He also played with all sorts of other shapes. Uh, definitely check out the Great Performances video with Michael Motion if you have an opportunity and you like skill-based play. Um, but in that video, 
uh, at the end of the video, he's got this routine that he's bounce juggling against a big metal plate that's hanging from the ceiling. And so he's throwing the balls down, they're bouncing, hitting the plate, and then bouncing back toward him. And so it's kind of interesting the way it bounces back at that angle. Um, but this big metal plate is actually suspended by all these metal rods. And at the end of this performance or this routine, he kind of throws his balls away and he th jumps down and he climbs underneath this metal plate and then all of these little rings start falling down the the metal rods and it's it's fascinating it, it looks awesome visually it like shimmers and and the sound is just amazing it's so beautiful and so uh so that's pretty cool so again check out great performances you can probably see it on youtube um michael motion and it's m-o-s-c-h-e-n uh, interesting thing, Penn Gillette of Penn & Teller actually taught Michael Motion to juggle. They both grew up in Greenfield, Massachusetts, so what a small world. Um, so the one I want to show you, the one that's probably most exciting in my collection, is one that I got from New Zealand, and I got it from a, a used, uh, sort of a, you know, sort of a trading site, like, a, like an eBay. Um, and this one uh, is this one right here, and it is a double-looped chattering, right? So it's uh, instead of just one time around, somebody took this metal rod and went twice around before welding it and put on it these eight beads. No, six beads, I'm sorry, six beads. We'll take this nice and close so you can see. All right, so we've got these six beads and they go around and around. And it's pretty neat. Um, now, practically speaking, I wouldn't say it is the greatest playing chattering. And the reason I, that is, is because when they're chattering, there's a lot of vibration. Um, there's so much extra metal, uh, it just sort of w just rattles a whole lot. So I'm going to show you what it looks like with those six going. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. A little bit harder to get going. All right. There we go. So that is the chattering going with six speeds. Now, the thing is, heck, you've got two loops. Challenge is to get both of these uh, loops active at the same time. Now, I will tell you, um, I have mixed success with this. Sometimes I can get them, sometimes I can't. It's kind of hard to get them all started at the same time. And then I think they hit at some point. Maybe I can get some going. And then, whoa, there we go. Whoa, okay, we got, we, got, we got three of the six. All right, whoa. All right, so two strategies. Either get them all going at the same time or hit them and jumpstart them when they come around. Where we, whoa. All right, here we go. Let's see if we got it. We got it. All right, all right, get one more over here. Try this one more time, one more time. Yeah, I'm going to do them one at a time. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this row, then this row. Whoa, all six of them. What? All right, all right. So that just shows you it's possible uh, to get uh, two sets of beads going around uh, chattering uh, 720 or a double loop-de-loop -loop or uh, whatever else you want to call it. So there you go. There's that. So, what's my challenge this week? My challenge this week, I was going to try a different toy, a different skill toy, and actually work on a trick that I couldn't do. But I'm, I'm sort of falling in love right again with the, the chattering, so I just want to spend some more time working on that. And really what I want to do is I want to work on the fundamentals. I'm one of those people that really likes to hammer down, get to the simplest thing that you can do with a, with a skill toy, and then do it really, really well, and start to play with the variables that are accessible at that simplest state. And so um, if you follow me with the flop ball, you know that I really like the back flip, the front flip, the out flip, and the in flip. And, and if you take that one flip, the flip like this, it's a back flip over here, but if I change my orientation, that back flip, the flop ball stays in the same space in the world, now it's an out flip. And if I go over here, the flop ball is still moving the same way in space, but now it's a front flip. So my orientation to the, the flop ball 
changes the trick, right? But I can also change the orientation of the flop ball to me, or I can change the orientation of me to the flop ball. So I really like that juxtaposition, that sort of, that playing with the, 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 the relationship of me and the prop. Well, the chattering has the exact same sort of space to play. Uh, you remember last week I did this uh, up the ladder trick, and this up the ladder trick just feels so nice. It's just sort of, you flip it around, and as you flip it around or swing it up, those, those beads change sides. It just feels good. Well, that's interesting. But if I'm standing over here, that up flip just now starts to turn into a, uh, well, it's sort of a swing up from the outside. So this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice working on the up, or the up ladder, which is a swing forward. I'm going to work on the down ladder, which is a swing um, that way, I guess, swing back. And I'm also going to work with these rolls, an out roll and an in roll. And I'm going to start to experiment with the rolls and the ladders using my right hand, using my left hand, and working on the transition. And what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to only record one minute of video every day. I'm going to spend five minutes practicing, but then culminate that with one minute video. And I'm going to put that together, consolidate it, and bring it into next week's recap. Uh, or actually not the recap, but into next week's episode. I'm going to try to make this a little bit more easy for people to watch and enjoy and really make it more relevant. When I was getting into juggling, uh, street performing, somebody had told me that you don't really know anything until you've done a hundred street shows. You don't really have a context or a perspective or a point of view that has any value until you really have start to have some experience. And I find that's true with playing with toys. Like I don't really know what I'm doing until I really spend some time with it. And this show is just an exercise in the exact same thing. So I hope you enjoy uh, where I'm going and where I get to. Until then, Find something that you want to work on this week. Spend five minutes a day. Pay attention to what kind of progress you make and, and what, kind of, um, what kind of things work for you, what things don't work for you, and, and really just free yourself to have fun in the process. Lessen some of that pressure. Don't feel overwhelmed by achieving whatever it is you're going for, but just really engage in the process and see what you learn from it because mindfulness is available in anything, anywhere. All it takes is attention and attention is your choice. So, we'll see you next week. Flop on.